Here we have two examples of the same mix that both measure minus 14 LUFs integrated. The LUFs scale is made to measure loudness, so they should sound equally loud. Let's confirm that. Did you also think that A clearly sounds louder than B? If you put these two on Spotify with loudness normalization enabled, A would sound louder than B, even though they have the same LUFS value. Maybe you have also noticed this when you listen to playlists, that some songs stand out more than others, despite that you have loudness normalization enabled. In this video, I will give you three factors that help explain this. Hopefully, it can be helpful for those of you who would like to have your tracks stand out in the loudness normalized world. Let's start by looking at the first example. In this song, there are quieter parts, like the intro and the verses. There are also louder parts, like the choruses. The loudness differences between these parts are the macro dynamics of the song. Loudness normalization on most streaming services uses the integrated LUFS value, which can be thought of as the average loudness of the whole song. In this example, the average loudness is somewhere between the loud parts and the quieter parts. This means that the louder parts will be louder than the average loudness. Let's even out the dynamics and make the different parts more similar in loudness. What will happen with this version after loudness normalization? Let's have a listen. Both versions are loudness normalized to minus 14 LUFS, just like they would be on, for example, Spotify. Now we can hear that the louder parts, the choruses, sound louder in the more dynamic version, A. On the other hand, the quieter parts sound quieter in version A. So by letting some sections be quieter, then the loud sections will be louder than the average. You could say that the choruses now measure quieter than they sound, since the measurement is based on the whole song. Me and Sophia talked about this in more depth in the video that we did about Fast Car by Tracy Chapman. And note that the integrated LUFS measurement also has something called gating. This will make very quiet sections of the song not affect the measured loudness. We can go into the details of that another time. Let's look at another type of dynamic variation, transients. These are the microdynamics of the song and come mostly from the attacks in the drums, percussion and other instruments. Let's listen to an example. Version A here at the top has clear and pronounced transients, while version B has soft and subdued transients. Both files are normalized to minus 14 LUFs, just as they would be on Spotify. Version A sounds more present than the more dull sounding version B. This is another example of when there is a difference between the measured loudness and the perceived loudness. The version with the transients measure quieter than it actually sounds. If the transients are smudged or flattened or limited, then there is a chance that the song will sound quieter than it would need to after loudness normalization. The last thing we will look at now is stereo width. In this last example, I have changed the amount of stereo information in the two versions. Version A is the full stereo mix, 
while version B has a much narrower stereo width, almost mono. Both versions are normalized to minus 14 luffs. If you are listening in stereo with headphones or speakers, then you will probably perceive the stereo version as more present and louder compared to the mono version. There is, of course, a limit to this. If the mix is too wide, then the mix will often lose the center definition and sound diffuse and out of focus. So there is a sweet spot for stereo width. So far, we have looked at three different factors that affect the measured versus perceived loudness. And these are dynamic variations, transients and stereo width. Now, let's combine all three of them for the last example, which is also what we heard in the beginning of the video. Also note that many of these things are decided already when arranging, recording and mixing the music. By the time the mix gets to the mastering stage, a lot of the decisions that affect the normalized loudness have already been made. And there are more factors that come into play as well. For example, I didn't get into the gating of low levels when measuring the integrated luffs, or tonal balance and the equal loudness contour, or how resonances and buildups can skew both the luffs measurements and the perceived loudness. But that will be for another time. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.